Here are my thoughts on the best way to prepare paint for your airbrush. I'm Warwick from Harder and Steenbeck and these are our need to know basics. Stay with us until the end of the video where I'll give you a really interesting point about different ways you can prepare paint for your airbrush. Now the basic point about it, I guess, is just stick to the basics. In the old days when I started airbrushing more than 25 years ago, paint was a really tough topic. There weren't that many good paints out there and man, we had to do some crazy stuff to get paint to work through our airbrushes. It really was a labor of love because it was kind of hard. Nowadays, we're in this beautiful golden age where all the paint manufacturers for the airbrush are making products that are really amazingly good. And the best way to get the most out of them is use them in the way that they intend. So the top, top tip is use the thinner, as I've said in another video, use the thinner from the people that make that paint, use the cleaner from the people that make that paint. Don't step outside of that because it really just makes life difficult when it doesn't need to be. Now, in terms of what consistency the paint should be, if you wanna err on the side of caution, always make the paint thinner rather than thicker. This will make it flow through the airbrush really well. It'll make it atomized cleanly and give you those beautiful blends of color that the airbrush is renowned for and often the main thing that we tend to use it for. People talk about trying to make your paint so it's like the consistency of milk. This is something that I think is a, a good way to talk about it. Everybody can understand it pretty well. Another way that you can think about it is if you dip a, a paintbrush into the paint and then pull it out, the way that the paint drips off, you don't wanna see any elasticity on that drip. The drip just wants to break off and cleanly fall off. You don't wanna see it elongate before it breaks and falls off the tip of the brush. If it's doing that, it's too thick and you need to add some more paint thinner to that paint until it just drips off really cleanly. Now the top tip is, and this is really a common theme that you're gonna see so often in terms of how we use the airbrush, is once you've figured out the basic rules, understand how you can use them to go outside the rules and get effects that are really interesting. So for example, over thinning the paint gives you the ability to have a super, super precise control on how you build up a shade or a hue. If you've got a paint that is thinned way more than what you really need to get it to spray effectively, then the pigment ratio in that mix you've created is gonna be very, very weak. And what that'll mean is when you, for example, going over a Zenithal highlight, you can control the hue that you create to a really, really high degree of accuracy and really make the decision exactly when you've got the exact color hue that you really, really want to have. Conversely, running the paint through the airbrush when it's too thick for what optimal would be from a spraying standpoint gives the ability to create slightly gritty textures with the finish that you're putting onto the subject that you're painting. So for example, if the paint is too thick, then it compromises the airbrush in terms of how well it can atomize the paint. It can give you a texture. The other thing it can do is when you're trying to create a really sharp line or very sharp detail, compromising the atomization of the paint is actually quite useful. So when you use a very thick paint coupled with a drop in your air pressure, you can really cause the airbrush to struggle to spread that paint as wide as it normally would do. And you can get these very hard edged very precise details from the airbrush. I hope that's helpful. Let us know in the comments if you found this improves your workflow.